What's up guys, Inigami here, and I want to talk to you guys a bit. I want to talk to you guys about Pokemon Go. Pokemon Go, it's a bad game. It's a broken game. It barely runs, the mechanics are terrible, and there's nothing to keep players engaged past the first few weeks or first month or so of gameplay. But I love the game. I love Pokemon Go, and I'd like to give my opinions on the ever-popular game Pokemon Go that you've undoubtedly heard about, or at least or played, or at least know people who've heard about, or seen it on news because it's all over the place. It's sweeping the nation. It's sweeping the world. Uh, one step, it's one step closer to that Pokemon MMO that I know when it comes out sometime in like 2050, it will absolutely destroy my life, and I'll end up spending a delicious and tons and tons of hours on that game. But Pokemon Go's greatest success, by far, is just the way it's changed us as as people. It's bringing us together. It's bringing us outside. If you walk outside anywhere since Pokemon Go's release, you'll find tons of people just glued to their phones. You'll and you'll look up and you'll see someone. Your eyes will meet, and you'll have that moment that you both know, that slightly guilty moment where you both know that you've been playing Pokemon Go, and they're also looking for that drowsy that's in the middle of the road or the ghastly down the street or something like that and you're both just swirling your finger and your phone's trying to catch it. In the old Pokemon games I've never understood the whole concept of hey we met our eyes met and now we've got to battle but with Pokemon Go I, I literally actually understand that. There have been moments that I wish I could pull out my phone and or while looking at my phone playing Pokemon Go meet my eyes with a complete stranger and I say just let's battle right now with our Pokemon. That's something I want to talk about with Pokemon Go and that's their lack of features that were promised in the game because there are many features that were promised that just have not shown up at all. Features such as trading, battling, friends, and stuff like that were all promised during the early days of Pokemon Go and it feels more like a beta than anything else or even an early alpha with the only things you can really do just catching Pokemon. Uh, Pokemon Go, it's a shell of a game. It's running around, like, just running around and catching Pokemon is great and all, but, and I, I mean, I'd be more than happy to do that for the entire game myself, but there's certain things that Niantic promised, like I said, that would be in the game that just are not. And the battling system in Pokemon Go is barely something you can call a battle system. All it ends up being is just tapping on your Pokemon game as fast as you can, maybe swiping every once in a while. You can hold down your phone to do a charge and a special attack, and but maybe those special attacks just aren't worth the time that you lose from just tapping. And that's assuming you can even get the gym battles to work, because the first many, many days of playing Pokemon Go and trying to battle a gym would be fighting the gym and ending up with the Pokemon at one health and them just standing there looking at you while you just stand there and wait for the Pokemon battle to time out because it freezes and it breaks and you just it, you just can't do anything because the battle is broken. That's, that's also something I want to talk about and that goes into the Pokemon Go servers. Now, Pokemon Go servers are about as reliable as your estranged Uncle Benji who's addicted to cocaine and only shows up on Thanksgiving for free food. I'm not going to completely blame Niantic for this. Uh, coming from a programming background, I work in programming, I work in IT, I work in software development. I've tried, uh, I've tried programming games that involve communicating just between a couple of computers and trying to figure out the network is hard. Trying to figure out a network between five million people is insanely hard. It's infinitely harder than anything I've ever worked on before in my life. And the solution that a lot of people say is not just to buy more or turn on more servers. It's not something so simple as that. You can't just turn on more servers to Pokemon Go and all of a sudden have the game handle more people. Like if they have four servers running, turning on a fifth server won't be able to have 20% more people playing on it. It's not, it doesn't work like that. And as someone who comes from a heavy gaming background and living through shitholes that are AAA game releases nowadays, I'm just used to and accustomed to not having games work on launch. I'm used to watching Diablo 3. Like, I remember distinctly downloading Diablo 3 the night before it came out and then just deciding to 
go to sleep and not bother trying to log in on launch day because I know servers are gonna be a shithole and I know nothing's gonna work. We've lived through dust countless of just bad game releases from the triple A games industry and I knew Pokemon Go would be no different. But the problem is at this time we are several weeks into the launch and servers are still unreliable and they are still rolling out servers to new countries and every time a new country rolls out servers undoubtedly goes down every single time. But something with that is we are not the only people who are being introduced to this game. You know, Pokemon Go is a cultural phenomenon. I have little cousins, I have aunts and uncles and friends, parents who are downloading the game because they want to see what this is about. They want to see what this game that's making the news about, what the game that's literally all their kids are playing, what the game that's getting their kids that are actually asking them to go outside, asking them to go to the park. What is this game that makes them want to go to the park? And people are downloading it just to see what it is. And it's so, it makes me feel so bad to recommend a game to someone who's not a gamer, someone who hasn't touched a game since they were 12 and playing the very first Mario games. And I get them to download this game and they spend several hours trying to log in and just can't do anything and just get so frustrated that they quit and just never try again. Uh, you can go on social media right now, you can see thousands, you can see pictures of during a few days ago we had servers down for six hours and people scheduled parties, people scheduled events, and you'll see pictures of like hundreds of people just sitting around in a park being disappointed because they came outside, they put effort to go out into the game. They didn't just sit on their computer and try to boot up a game. They didn't just sit there and start on a program on a computer and go, oh, it doesn't work, I guess I'll go do something else. They went out, they scheduled this on their day, they met their friends, and they can't, they can't do it because it doesn't log in and it's just so frustrating to see these people and to watch them just not be able to play it because of these server problems. But the server problems aren't the only issue. Like, I'm, I don't blame them completely for the server problems. You know, server problems are understandable. It's very hard to solve, and it's something that will be there for until pe the, the hype dies down, until fewer people play. But what I do, do really blame Niantic for is their complete lack of communication as to what's going on. You know, I don't, I don't ask for detailed tweets about, hey, we've, this is a bug, we're working on this. I just would like some... Uh, acknowledge it of servers are currently down and then whenever they fix it servers are back up something like that uh, just earlier when when filming this and writing this there is a website called pokevision.com that's a website that lets you it uses the Pokemon Go's API to search for Pokemon live wherever you are around you right now and well we're not even gonna talk about the three-step bug right now but that site while browsing it actually went down on me like their servers went down and as soon as I checked their Twitter page literally one minute ago like so while I was browsing the page the moment it went down they let us know they had a tweet that said it's going down for a quick maintenance so a website that's run for free by fans has minute by minute updates letting us know that their servers are going down and they're going to take care of it and it'll be back in a few minutes but Pokemon Go and Niantic are too busy tweeting at Soulja Boy and Jimmy Kimmel asking them about their Pokemon games because as of as of writing this, as of recording this, the last three tweets from Niantic are Japan Pokemon Go servers have come out. Several days ago, a tweet to Jimmy Kimmel, and several hours before that, a tweet to Soldier Boy. And no notices at all about Pokemon Go server issues or anything like that. And the last update we had, um, I, I, the last update we had reads minor text issues. Minor text issues I know is definitely not all they face because it's a 25 megabyte download, but still to put out something like that and just update minor text issues when people are not even able to play or log into their game is just a little bit of, it's just rubbing a little bit of dirt in your players faces when you know they're having these big issues. And it was, uh, there's also the three-step bug issue that I know a lot of people are talking about that 
your Pokemon Go game right now, if you look at it, if you open it up, it shows you the list of Pokemon that are supposed to be close by, but they are always now stuck at three steps, and it's you don't even get the same Pokemon around you that you're supposed to have. But this is just, it's changed how I feel about going out and looking for Pokemon, you know? Uh, when the game, when the, the when it works, and you can see that, hey, there's a, there's a Rapidash somewhere close by. There's a Rapidash three steps away. And you'll have your friends outside, and you'll send someone to the north, someone to the west, somewhere to the east, and someone's gonna like, hey, I got two steps, and then you guys rush over there. It's so interactive, it's so fun to just watch people going out and running around and look, trying to like zero in on where this rare Pokemon is. You know, you see like a Dratini, and everyone's like, oh, where's the Dratini? We'll walk this way, we'll walk that way, and you find it, and then you catch it, and it's so good. You feel like you're hunting that Pokemon. But for the last several days, Right now, everything's stuck at three steps, and it's just showing you random Pokemon. It's not actually working, and it just, you, it's not, there's no point in trying to look for Pokemon. You just, you walk around, and you just happen upon Pokemon, but you don't get that feeling of hunting a Pokemon, which really, really breaks down how fun the game is. It takes away that fun of, God, there's something, there's something good close by. Where is it? And that's whenever your half of your game is looking for Pokemon. When you can't look for Pokemon, then then what? Then what's the point? Then what is the point? And then there's also the issue of where Pokemon are. If you don't know, the way that Niantic determines how often Pokemon spawn is based on data usage with your with cell phone devices. So the more cell phone devices are using data in a certain area the more often Pokemon will spawn there. And this is a complete disconnect between what we expect a Pokemon game about hunting Pokemon or where Pokemon would be in real life to where Pokemon actually are. If you're in a big downtown, a big bustling downtown area, you'll have dozens of Pokemon spawning all over the place. Look at cities like New York and Central Park. Look at, I mean, I'm in Houston. Look at downtown Houston. It's tons of Pokemon all over the place because there's so many people using so many cell phones there. You've got like an Onyx in the middle of downtown, but if you're out if you're out on a camping trip, if you're out in the suburbs, if you're going out into the deep forest behind your grandpa's backyard where you'd expect something to be, you're going to spend hours to find like a single Pidgey because there's nothing out there because no one uses cell phones. And this would work in Niantic's old game. Niantic's old game, um, Ingress, is about hacking points. It's about cyber sleuths going around and controlling points from each other. And having a lot of action in a big city makes sense with a game like that. You know, that is a mechanic working well with the game's theme. If you're in a big city, you expect more hackers and more big data points to be fought over there. Whereas out in the boondocks, you don't expect anything. But with Pokemon, if you're out in a rural country, you'd at least be able to see something on a half-decent basis. But since there's no one using server, uh, their cell phone data out there, you just basically don't get anything at all. They need to change some kind of algorithm with how Pokemon are spawned. Uh, the, only, the only saving grace for this is that going to a park is amazing because you're able to walk around a park there's usually lots of poke stops at parks and being able to meet people who are not normally there if you go to a park like two weeks before pokemon goes release i can guarantee you there's nowhere near as many people out there as there are today because so many people are out there to play this game and it's just so good i'm angry at pokemon go because i love the game there's so much potential that i want it to be there's so much that I wish it could introduce to people but and I know and I without a doubt without a doubt the game would be much worse than it is if it were run by a company like EA or Ubisoft and I'm so strict with my judgment of Pokemon Go because I don't want to see it fail they've been they've been doing a great job with their monetization the free to play version of the game is absolutely working out great like I want to buy things in the game because not because I feel like I have to I feel like I can absolutely play the game without spending any money but it just I want to love the game so much that I want to spend money on the game and that's also something that people will defend the game for that it's free to play it's a free game 
why are you why are you so angry about it because once you start charging for in-game purchases once you start charging real life money without refunding that money you're no longer a free-to-play game. You're a real game. I haven't spent money on a game. I haven't used any of my lucky eggs or incenses because I'm worried that if I use it, servers will go down. And what happens when servers go down after you use a lucky egg? You're SOL. They are not going to refund you that egg. They're not going to give you that time back. You just lose out on that money. And I can't trust that servers will still be there if I use my egg at any time of the day because who knows what's going to happen to the servers. And if you look on the the Pokemon Go subreddit, you'll see half of the posts going, Hey, Pokemon Go servers have been live for a whole day now. Isn't that amazing? It's so sad that we're so hyped for servers just being playable for a day. And it's been weeks and weeks after release. And by this rate, in a month, when people catch all their Pokemon, when they catch everything they see in the area, and they don't are not longer they're no longer seeing new Pokemon. Their Pokemon are pretty pretty well leveled up. There's not much else to do besides fighting for gyms and controlling the gyms to control more gyms to catch the same Pokemon over and over again. That unless you're one of the hardcore players, unless you're a true gamer, past that first few weeks, not even months, past that first few weeks of playing a game, there's just not much else to Pokemon Go. There needs to be more in Pokemon Go for it to succeed and not be just a passing fad, for it to actually stay the cultural phenomenon that it's set up to be right now. It feels more like a beta release or an early alpha release than anything else. It feels like this is them pointing, showing it out to the world and saying, hey, here's our weekend stress test. Try it out. We want to see if you can catch Pokemon and do stuff. And then later on, we'll release all these other features that make it a real game. But right now, there needs to be a lot of changes to Niantic's communications, to their servers, and their content before it becomes an actual long-time success. I mean, if Niantic... Please, if you have time to tweet at celebrities like Soldier Boy and Jimmy Kimmel, at least give us a simple message that says we are aware of server issues and we are currently working on them. And once they're fixed, just say servers are back up. Enjoy the game. Thank you so much for your support. <sighs> Guys, thank you so much for hanging around. I know this is different from the content that's used on the channel, and this is something that I really like and I hope you enjoy it. And if there's other gaming news or other gaming content that you'd like me to talk about or other any other controversies or anything you'd like to hear my opinion on, please let me know. Send me a tweet, write it in the comments down below. Let me know on Twitch and I would love to actually just speak more about it. Uh, I've always been very passionate about game development in the game industries. I've tried my hand at game development. I am a programmer. I live for games. And that's why, I, that's why I make YouTube videos, that's why I stream games on Twitch, because it's one of my ways of getting into the games industry. It's one way for I can, so I can share my opinion on games, the games development, and that's something I just like to do more often on this channel on Twitch. I'd like to say a special thank you to our Patreon subscribers, Carlos Baron, Super, Cra Super Crazy Apple, Pat a Magician, and to anyone else who is watching these videos, and everyone who's watching on Twitch and YouTube. If you'd like to be a Patreon subscriber and make these videos possible, there is a link in the video description down below. I've been Zinigami. Thank you so much for watching, and y'all stay beautiful.